Good evening ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's video is going to be describing how to find targets on the ground, especially SAMs. Um, I know I said I wouldn't do any more tutorials for uh, DCS missions, but it seems like um, there's a lot of people who are having problems finding targets. I'm telling you right now, there is no real magic behind this. It's really going to be a lot of struggling with the targeting pod and your map. So, um, without further ado, let's dive right into it. Okay, so the first thing you might want to do is understand how your radar warning receiver works, or RWR. I'm not going to explain everything in exact detail, but if you understand this general gist, you will much better understand what is going on when I'm flying. So, let us say that this is you. You are over here. You're heading this way. Great. Out of nowhere, an icon appears on your radar warning receiver, and it shows up in front of you here. And it's an SA-6 site. Should be a diamond on the radar warning receiver. I'm just gonna roughly draw out the radar warning receiver here. Now this SA-6 site appears on your radar warning receiver over here. And it is some physical distance X away from you. Now all of a sudden, as you're flying along, another icon appears inside your circle as a 10. This is, would be a diamond, obviously. And uh, this is an SA-10 site. Now, an SA-10 site is a long-range SAM site. Now, a lot of people like to think that because this shows up closer to the middle, because this represents a bird's-eye view in the radar warning receiver, um, they think that the SA-10 site in physical space is right here and you would be dead wrong. See, the radar warning receiver doesn't show what the physical distance is, it represents the threat range. What does that mean? Well, that means that in reality, what you are looking at is this. He is actually this distance away from you, whatever this may be, but according to the radar warning receiver, he is a much bigger threat to you than the SA-6 site. Why? Well, the SA-6 can fire up to 46,000 feet and 13 nautical miles. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that the 13 nautical miles is represented by this circle. So in reality, you're still not within firing range of the SA-6. However, the SA-10 site has an engagement of 25 nautical miles and 98.5 thousand feet. Uh, these numbers are a little bit sketchy. There's different sources with different numbers, but generally speaking, I got this off of a manual. So let's say that is represented by, and this goes beyond the drawing distance board that I have here, but let's say this distance. Okay, so now you see what's going on. You are well within firing range of this SA-10 site, but not yet within firing range of the SA-6 site. Hence why the SA-10 is closer to the middle to you than the SA-6. The other thing you need to pay attention to is the fact of this dotted circle. On the actual radar warning receiver, you will see it as this inner circle. Uh, take that circle to be your oh shit circle. That circle represents that anything at or inside of that circle, you're pretty much within firing range. And if you take that circle to be the maximum firing range of that uh, thing, whatever it may be, an aircraft or a SAM site, then you sort of have a nice basis line for when you're going to be screwed. Uh, apologies for the music in the background, I just had my iTunes and shuffle. I was, wasn't aware that it was captured in the background recording. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did over here. It's a good idea to play around with your gain counter, which is on the top left corner of your targeting pod. See, so yeah, I uh, move it up and down to get a much clearer picture of what's going on, and you can see this is much better than it was before. You can see things in a better outline. So this is probably your first step if you're going to be observing things. Now, I haven't done this mission before, so I'm just scanning with my targeting pod and taking a look of what's going on um, around. This is a very big city that I'm looking at, and it's extremely painful to try and find things in here. It will be a very long process. Over here you can see that I have found some infantry. Now, uh, infantry is very difficult to understand if it's friend or foe. From very far away, you can see I'm at 32.5 nautical miles. So now I'm just trying to figure out on the map, uh, since I do have F10 option available, 
where these guys are. Uh, if you go to the control page of retarding pod, you can change from uh, lat long to MGRS coordinates. And uh, you can see at the bottom it's changed to a grid coordinate, and now I can match it up to the uh, F10 map. And here you can see that I found the two infantry uh, columns, and I click on it just to confirm that it is the infantry. Okay, so now that that's done, um, they are the most furthest west uh, friendlies that I have in the city. I have marked point this position. I switched to my TAD, and with China had forward short twice, I'm in, or once, I'm in EXP1 mode where I can move around the cursor in the city. You can see the A over there is my mark point, and that represents the westernmost, northwesternmost friendlies. So now I know anything left or west of that position is going to be hostile. Now at this point I've been scanning the town for a while and I found some targets, but I hear on my RWR that an 8 appears, and an 8 represents an uh, SA-8, which is an OSA. Okay, so now we have some fun and uh, we can go and try and find this target. Now, I spend very short, quick time just looking around my target and see if I can perhaps find it and adjust my gain as well. And I got lucky, because I found it right away. It was right in front of me, and there it is. I mark point that position, so I have it in case anything happens. And here we have another SA-8 that appears on the RWR. Okay, so now I have a little conundrum. I could try and spend some time and look around and find that other SA-8 as I'm careening towards this area. Or, I can use a second method. The second method would be to fire on this guy, uh, turn away, and observe the radio warning receiver. So I put my targeting pot on the left, I have my Maverick on the right. Um, I have Ks, I have two K Mavericks uh, for the fun of it. Instead of going with a massive payload, I just went with two Mavericks to get most maneuverability since I knew I was going to go and uh, fire on Sam's. And here I'm using force correlate mode, which explains why it's taking me so long to get the uh, Pipper right onto the target. I just want to get it as close as possible. Since I have Ks, um, if it hits anywhere near that area, it should kill it because Ks have one of the biggest warheads in Mavericks that we have. Little chaff outbound just in case, because you can see that the SA-8 is well within the circle. He's definitely within firing range, but he's probably trying to drag me in close before he fires. But I'm not having any of that. I uh, put him off on my 3 o'clock and I'm just going to observe what happens on the RWR. Now I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see on the RWR that the SA-8s are stacked together on the inner circle. When this thing hits, either the top one or the bottom one of the RWR is going to disappear. Just give it a second, and we should see right about now the top one disappears. Okay, that means that the other SA-8 is somewhere east of this target that I just shot at. So now I have a good general direction where in the city I can look to find the other SA-8. And it's this kind of planning and meticulous action that you need to take in order to find these guys, especially in a city as clustered and as huge as this. Now at this point, I just took a huge stab in the dark and I was just scanning around. Since that SA-8 was sort of in the open, I'm guessing that this one will also be. So I'm looking around in open spaces to see if I can find it, and lo and behold, there she is. No magic used. Just dumb luck and looking around with the targeting pod. That's all that was. Now this is where a little bit of planning comes into play. As you can see that there's a building in the way. It's probably not a good idea to fire from this angle. So I'm going to push right uh, a little bit further on the head. Until that building is away from the uh, line of shot from the Maverick. And uh, then I'm going to fire at it from the right side of that building. Here I've already lined up and I'm using Force Correlate again because the Mavericks won't lock at this range. And that's close enough since it's okay, I'll kill it. Uh, push away to the left, away from the city, right over the friendlies positions because right below me are all friendlies, so I know this is a safe area. Pop some chaff as well for defensive measure and just wait. Be ready to do def defensive maneuvers in case he fires. He's well within a circle, I'm not sure why he's not firing, but uh, better for us, right? And splash. Great. 
Now, I did notice at some point there was an SA-6, and... Oh, yep, there it is on the bottom. I have nothing to kill it with, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and find it. Now, I have no clue to even begin to know where this guy is. One way of doing this is by placing this guy on my RWR on my 3 or 9 o'clock. So if I place that SA-6 pretty much off to my 9 o'clock, I can then look visually with my wing to the 9 o'clock or use the targeting pod and use the dot that you can see to the left of the targeting pod that represents that my targeting pod is looking directly to my left on my 9 o'clock position to see if I can find him. Um, this is a big uh, shot in the dark. This is like trying to find a needle in a haystack this way. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. In this case, after a little bit of searching, I just got tired of this crap and I decided to go for a more extreme way of trying to find this guy. So what I'm going to do here is go pretty much Wild Weasel. Now, Wild Weasel was a uh, combat tactic that the A-10s employed when working in groups. 1910 would go in and get himself shot at purposely by Sam. He would then dodge it while the wingman is looking in that general direction, finds the guy who just shot. You can tell where he is by the uh, plume of smoke uh, from the Sam that just fired, and then he can engage it. This is a very risky maneuver, and I would not uh, recommend it for anybody that's not experienced in dodging Sams, but uh, this is one of the last sort of resorts in finding out where uh, a Sam might be. You can do this alone, you don't actually need a wingman. It's just a little bit harder on you, you need to have very good visual memory. So make sure you're looking outside of your uh, pit when you're doing this, and not have your head between your knees, because you're gonna get shot at and you're not gonna know. Here's an example of exactly what I mean. Now I've placed the SA-6 sight off of my left 9 o'clock, and you can see I just got shot at. And I just barely saw that, and there is no RWR indication that this guy just shot. So, I can't exactly tell what this guy is. I have a pretty good idea that it might have been an IR shot, since I received no RWR spike. And uh, the MWS system also failed to mention that there was being fired on, which is kind of weird, because that was very close. My wing wasn't in a weird position where the uh, MWS sensor is. Well, fuck being safe. I'm just going to do it again and see if I get a spike or if uh, I can figure out visually what this guy is. There he is. He's in plain view. Let's see what he does. I just heard my RWR go off, but I don't want to take my eyes off this guy. Why? Well, that he just shot. That's why. All right, well, defensive maneuver. Again, no MWS, no RWR spike. This guy's working on some pure stealth right there, which is <laughs> really weird. So I tried a little bit of different tactic by going a little bit further away. Uh, you can see now he's shot. My MWS system picked it up immediately, but uh, still no hard spike. So I feel like this guy probably is a uh, IR guy, maybe an SA-13, but uh, I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, this is another method that I use uh, in order to get things on my targeting pod very quickly. So I know where he is visually, I've memorized it into my brain. I'm gonna turn my plane over directly at the target from far away where he can't shoot at me. Now my targeting pod is stowed, you can see the diamond is in the middle of my HUD. With my targeting pod selected as soy on my right MFD, I'm just gonna place this nose of my aircraft right on and press TMS up. You saw the diamond stuck on target, and I'm just gonna move it in, and look, voila, it's a fucking Tunguska. It's that exact Tunguska which was spiking us earlier. And that's it. There's really not much else uh, I can tell you guys in order to find these uh, targets. Um, there are other ways people do it with their RWRs, and you can employ your own tactics in figuring this out. Uh, but generally speaking, if you're by yourself, follow these general rules, and uh, you're probably going to come out on top. Uh, just for the end of the video, I'm going to go on a suicide run and engage this Tunguska up close. Which is a fucking suicide run, because remember, Tunguskas have AAA guns. And they are very accurate. I kind of tip my wing across the ground here, but, uh... Pull up. Pull up. And he's already targeting me, and popping chaff, there goes guns, and boom, he turned me to shreds. But I got him too, so, uh, yeah. Alright, that's it for this video, guys. See you next time.